This is Pick 6 presented by KFAN. Voice of the Vikings, Paul Allen, Gabe Henderson, I'm Tatum Everett. And we got your questions through Twitter this week to talk about this Vikings 49ers matchup on the heels of a win, which feels great to say. Guys, how you feeling after that one? Pretty good. All we do is beat Green Bay. I mean, we've beaten the team two consecutive times. So uh, early 2022, end of the season, let's make it three. I feel good. First ever border battle with fans. Ooh, great. So to have that was great. Yeah, we're going to get to that in just a second. The Vikings with a chance to, for the first time this season, to get a winning record, which I think is just big, big week. Sets up for some big questions. We'll start it off, though, with the first one like we always do. The best thing you saw on Sunday. Paul, you got 30 seconds. Well, that would be the walk-off winner by kicker Greg Joseph because – Man, this young man has been put in some really, really big spots this uh, season for the Minnesota Vikings. And some of the negatives are going to remember the 37-yard miss at Arizona. But he has two game-winning field goals. He is 6 of 7 from 50 and beyond. And even though the game winner was relatively short, 29 yards, it's still pressure-filled. You got a lot of fans. It's a border battle. And that guy you're looking at right now, Mike Zimmer, if you miss it, um, you're going to get the other side of that celebration. So, Greg Joseph, you to man. Yeah, he said it was a moment he'll remember for the rest of his life, and I'm sure we will too. Gabe, best thing you saw on Sunday? Well, best thing I saw on Sunday came from QB1 uh, post game. Not even what he did on the field, but what he did in his vehicle, a Ford in this case. Uh, he was driving behind somebody. I think we got the video footage of it, and I think he was saying. Oh. They thought that he was following them, like tail tailgating <laughs> them on the way home. So like they're driving slow, driving fast. And then Kirk pulls around and like, you know, Kirk in his Sunday's best. He had already put on his Sunday's best performance earlier. Goes around and honks his horn at those guys. And I'm like, what a, what a man of the people. Could you imagine looking I, over? I can only imagine being in that van right now. It's just like, why are you to oh, Kirk Cousins? Oh, hey, hey, yeah. So I feel like that was uh, yeah. that was the energy and the best thing that I saw this week, and it was just great to see. Are you kidding me it's, with that? You, didn't, I, you yeah. haven't seen that yet? I have not seen that. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. I mean, can you play any faster right now, Kirk? Oh, my God. Well done. Right? Well done. Kudos to QB. Jeez. Kudos QB to QB. Well, Rest the best thing that I saw on Sunday, guys, came from Mike Zimmer, and it wasn't that celebration we just saw. <laughs> we'll hear it. Sundays are not fun. <laughs> Sunday, you know, they say Sunday's fun day. It is, no, it's not at all. Really impressed the coach knows what Sunday fun day is, <laughs> having his occupation. No, I don't think these Sundays have been very fun for him. But as much as it is stressful, it was a Sunday fun day. So yeah, but I just like his comedy. He has grandkids now. So, I mean, Two. you know, it's ba da 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 da. So he probably does that. <laughs> he talks about Sunday fun day, actually knows what a nook is, a nookie. Uh, which we've needed five times this year after games. So he's a different guy. He wonder, feels like a different guy. Different I wonder energy. if he sings to his grandkids. Like, I would pay money just to see him, like, sing oh, to his grandkids. Yeah. Because okay. you, just, you just started singing Fada La La. And what yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't not, bet I'm on that. <laughs> but, I'm not going to sing. It's not Christmas yet. I don't get paid Christmas to sing. Yet. Yeah, but no. we did have some really good fan questions this week, so we're going to get you guys back on track with question number two. This is from Bob Rombach. Oh, great. PA, this one is, is for you. Why yeah, was PA so better. fired up with a Green Bay coach after the game? What the heck did he say to PA? I'll tell you this. Bob may have had the question, but there were like seven of those like that. <laughs> They're very curious. Well, why don't you tell them why I did what I did? Because you baited me into it. <laughs> well, I, I knew going into the week you were very high on what Justin Jefferson could do to Eric Stokes. So when the opportunity presented itself, mm -hmm. Justin Jefferson proving that he has always gotten a better hand on him, mm -hmm. I had to toss you the question first. I was like, okay, so now your point was proven. Okay. How do you feel? Uh, well, I'm not going to go far down the road on the exchange between the coach and I because I kind of handled it on between the lines. What I said is the truth. I would like to apologize publicly to Eric Stokes for what I said uh, because there's a difference between being fired up for a performance and some things I said in between the lines. So I got respect for you, young man. I love Justin Jefferson. I'm sorry it went that far. Best of luck the rest of the way. I'm pretty sure Eric Stokes is a big Vikings pick six fan, so he'll definitely hear that apology. Yeah, but this stuff, <laughs> well, no, he won't because <laughs> this is kindness, and kindness does not go viral. Um, yeah. Going pear-shaped like I did goes viral.
All right, well, we settled that one. We settled the debate. Let's head out to question number three. This one we'll send to Gabe. It was a great win on Sunday. Just wanted to know how confident you are that the offense can continue to play aggressive and have Kirk decide the game. Christian Lagrasso says he's pumped. He wasn't afraid to see Kirk taking shots, and he hopes it continues. Gabe? Yeah, I hope it continues also, and I think I am very confident. Well, I know for a fact that I'm very confident in putting the, the game in Kirk's hands. He's been in the, – the game has been in his hands the past few weeks, and Kirk has delivered time and time again. Right. Even some of the games that we've lost, Kirk has drove us down the field to put us in position to score. And, I mean, just plays like this where you just see him just making just – Hall, I mean, I wouldn't even say Hall of Fame, but just Pro Bowl caliber type plays. Like this is oh. this is what makes every Vikings fan confident. Oh, funny, there's Putting 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sure what you said last week is playing on his radio every single day as motivation. But Kirk Cousins, very confident going forward. Yeah, we love to see it. Well, let's get to question number four. Evan Morris asks, PA, why do I get the feeling the Niners are going to stomp us? Mm. Oof, we've got 30 seconds on the clock for you, Paul. Yeah, I mean, there was the playoff game after the 2019 season, but they're different and so are we. Uh, there was a weird one in 2015, first game of the season, something called Jim Tom Sula was their coach and we got beat. Uh, but, um, I, but, but we ended up going to the playoffs and winning the division. I wouldn't trip out over this. We're every bit as good as, as them, if not better. Uh, they beat Jacksonville by 20, and before that, they beat the Chicago Bears. Now, they did beat the Rams, but they lost to Colt McCoy at home. Mm -hmm. So, anything is possible. Kirk ain't Colt McCoy. All right, I like it. Anything is possible. Let's head out to question number five now for Gabe. This is Sarah. She asks, why does it seem like Adam Thielen is no longer appreciated by most of the fans <laughs> and maybe not even by parts of the team? Whoa. Like, who's ever said that? I don't, I don't know where this like, one came from, uh, which is why I thought we really should talk about it. Like, I mean, whenever – like J.J., right, he's, he's top five in the NFL in receiving yards. But Adam Thielen, he's third Clutch. in the NFL in re receiving touchdowns. When your wide receiver number two is still making plays like this, everyone appreciates him. I think J.J., he's the new guy on the block, the new kid on the block, so he has all the energy and juice. But Adam Thielen is still out here making plays. Like, the teammate, his teammates appreciate him. The coaching staff appreciates him. We for sure appreciate him, but still – like, whenever your wide receiver, two is still making plays like this, that opens up opportunities for everybody. Like, I want Adam Thielen to, to be underappreciated by defensive teams. There you go. Defensive coordinators, because if that's the case, we're talking about another 1,000-yard re yard receiving season for him. Yeah, it was a question that kind of shocked me, too, because I don't think that anyone's ever underappreciated Adam he, Thielen in recent years. I mean, I'm not uh, disparaging or disrespecting anybody else on this team, but, I mean, if you line them all up, a, a Minnesota kid like him, yeah. he's the most popular guy on the team mm -hmm. with the fan base. That's, at least that's the way I'd bet. All right, we've got our final question. Oh. Question number six is coming from Skull Sister. Skull. First, she asked – Gabe and I, if our first border battle Aww. experience with fans and how, like, how did it go? And so we'll take that one first. Then the second one is about the offense success moving forward. So we'll, I'll, yeah, I'll take this one first. Uh, absolutely life changing. It's exactly what you signed up wow. for. You got all of the heroics, all of the, I mean, ended in a great way, obviously, but you got everything you wanted for in that game including the W. So honestly, it was it was awesome. It was definitely up there with like top three games I've ever been to. Wow. Oh, for sure. I, I, I would definitely give you that too. I think if you're a fan of the NFL, you will watch every single Vikings game because every game is going to be entertaining. But if you're a fan of the Vikings, last week was the best game to come to. And that, for me, I've never experienced an atmosphere like that. And hopefully every single one from here on out it is as good as it was last week. And might, might I add, the only thing maybe beating them out are the national championship oh. games oh. That I've been to before for college football. So it's definitely up there with From those. the heart, you know, that that was like border battle 42 for me, mm -hmm. calling the games. Mm -hmm. And hearing you guys talk the way <laughs> you guys talked about go. that, it, it heightens my level of appreciation for the next one in knowing and or hoping Eric Stokes doesn't beat me up. <laughs> So now I'm yeah, really you're, excited for it. You're going to have a uh, bounty on you when you head up to Lambo. I got soon. Gabe next to me. And this, let's yeah, talk about the second Gabe part of this. Of it. <laughs> let's talk about the second part of this question. Mm -hmm. uh, the offense found plenty of success Sunday against a top five defense. Have the Vikings found the recipe for success moving forward? We'll take a different part of the offense to answer this one. So PA moving forward 30 seconds. You like Dalvin Cook, huh? 
A lot. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, he, he's maybe the best overall running back in the NFL. Now, it is fair to note that our yards per carry and rushing yards this year are not as high as they have been in some past successful years. Mm. But if you deep dive the runs of 20 or more and or 40 or more, we're right up there with everybody. So they're sitting on big things with this running game. And when you have Dalvin, that's where game plans start and stop for defensive coordinators. Because if you don't stop Dalvin, you're going to get killed by the rest. Right. Gabe, your turn. I know you're going to pick a different weapon on this offense. I'm going to go J.J. I think it's been proven that J.J. is the recipe for success. I know this is an offense where we like to run the ball first to set up the pass, but clearly the past two weeks we have used the pass to set up the run. And why not give the ball to J.J. on the first few plays like we've done the past few weeks? Whenever you get J.J. out in space, um, good luck. But whenever you get Dalvin Cook out in space, that's what we want because it's still good luck to whoever's guarding him. But J.J., you got to win the offense through him to open everything up, open everything else up. And this has been a recipe for success the past two weeks. And if the shoe ain't, if it, I mean, if it ain't fixed, if it ain't broken, why fix it? Yeah, no. Against the wow. Packers, the last two weeks against the Packers, no receiver had 37 yards. He got that on one catch. Low key in those highlights, Mason Cole's work mm. on Kenny <laughs> Clark. Yeah. Oh, my heavens. Well done, young man. Well done, young man. Speaking of young men, I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins. I think he is going to be our X Factor moving forward in this one. He is just having quite a season. He's leading the league with five games of at least 275 passing yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. And if you can throw a clean game, play a clean game like that, I'm going to take money and put it on you for sure. Mason Cole. Nice. He's also sees, been seeing a lot of pressure. And for me in this game, I felt like Kirk is playing, played freely. And with that freeness comes a new confidence. So I like our chances moving forward. <laughs> JJ, can you do that with the head and everything? I think that's just one of those things. Oh. You just got to be in the moment. I don't think you can wow. make stuff like that. Yeah, we asked Adam Thielen about his touchdown dance at post game live for the interview, yeah, and yeah. he kind of had a, it was an inside joke with them, but it just it looked a little funny. So, he, he, you know, Didi Westbrook actually made that that he dance. He made that up. dance. So up? it's okay. a it's a Texas dance, and Didi Westbrook. Gotcha. So if you look at one, I think it's like Hot Mike. So okay. one of the hot mic segments, D.D. Westberg was like, all right, we got to do the drop now. And everybody just did the drop. Got so, it. I um, mean, that's, that's pretty funny that we have a Louisiana and a Texas dance on yeah. the Minnesota Vikings. But the more, the merrier, because that means you're scoring. I love to see it. Yeah. Thank you so much to Gabe Henderson, Paul Allen, voice of the Vikings, for joining us here for Pick 6. If you want to get your question on the show two weeks from now, submit them via Twitter. Follow Paul, Gabe, or myself. And you can do it that way. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on Sunday against the 49ers.